Welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we looked at the general relationship between voltage, current and resistance in a DC circuit. In this video, we're going to formalise that relationship. We're going to set up an experiment where we'll measure voltage and current very carefully being applied to a resistor and we're going to see what the relationship is between them. We're going to use this information to generate an all-important formula for electricians. The formula we're going to generate will be really important for you being able to pass your exams, but it's also going to be absolutely critical when you become an electrician, when you're working on site. For example, if you need to calculate fault current within a circuit, then you'll be able to use this formula to do so. If we only take one formula away from our time at college, this is the one that we need to remember. It's absolutely critical. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring the camera in and we're going to set up our circuit and we're going to try and generate this all important formula. So as we said in this video, we're going to connect up a DC power supply to a resistor and we're going to measure the current flowing around this circuit. What we're then going to do is look at the values that we've got and we're going to generate a very important formula from this information to help us understand the relationship more clearly between voltage, current and resistance in a DC circuit. So we've got a 10 ohm resistor connected into the circuit and we're currently applying a voltage to it. So let's set up our multimeter over here to measure voltage and we'll measure the voltage that's being applied to the circuit. So I've got a lead in the common terminal as we always do on a multimeter and we've got another lead in the uh, terminal marked with a V because we're going to be measuring voltage. So I'm then going to twist this round to measure DC volts. Now I'm going to be around about 2 volts so I'm going to go to the 20 volt range so that I don't uh, overshoot the reading on here. So I'll connect my leads into the circuit. So there's one side connected and there's the other side connected. And what we're going to do here is we're going to measure the voltage. So let's try powering this up and see what reading we get. So we can see there that we've got exactly two volts being applied to this circuit. So what we're now going to do is set up our other multimeter to measure current. Now we're going to set this one up to the DC current range. Now I think I know roughly the reading that I'm going to be getting, so I'm going to make sure that my uh, ammeter can measure within the range that I think we're going to be getting. So I've got it set to measure 10 amps DC and we'll see what reading we get. Now it's really important to remember when we connect up a voltmeter, we connect it up in parallel with the circuit. When we connect up an ammeter, we connect it in series with the circuit. So for this part, I'm going to remove a link from the circuit and then I'm going to connect up my ammeter and measure what the current is flowing around the circuit. So we'll see what that is now. So you can see there that we are currently measuring uh, minus 0.19 amps. Now it's interesting that that's come out as a negative value. Now the reason for that is that the leads here are connected uh, back to front if you like. So all we've got to do to correct that is flip our leads over. We send the current flowing through the ammeter in the other direction now and you can see that this has come out as a positive reading. It's the same value, give or take, but you can see there that we've got uh, a positive reading now instead. So if you ever get a negative reading when you're doing one of these experiments, all you've done is just got your leads in the wrong way around and you just need to flip them over. The minus just indicates a change of direction of the current. So this has worked out really quite beautifully. You can see here that we're applying around two volts, just ever so slightly over, but we won't worry about that a little bit. So we're applying around two volts to the circuit. We're applying that voltage to a 10 ohm resistor and we're coming out with 0.2 of an ampere. So let's just think about those numbers and let's see if we can find a relationship between them. So first of all, let's just think about the three things that we're dealing with. We're dealing with current, voltage and resistance. Now we need to remember what the different mathematical symbols are for these three different things. So let's deal with current first of all. So to represent current when we're doing maths, we use a capital I. So I means current. This comes from 
the original uh, French research into electricity where I stood for intensity du charge, which is what we now call current, which is why we represent it with an I. So I equals current, and of course we measure current in amperes. The unit symbol for that is a capital A. We then have voltage. Voltage is of course measured in volts, and it's represented mathematically by a capital V. So V equals voltage, that is measured in volts, and represented with the unit symbol capital V again. And then finally we have resistance. Now mathematically we represent resistance with a capital R, so R equals resistance. We measure resistance in ohms, named for George Simon Ohm, and we represent ohms with a unit symbol, we represent that with the Greek letter omega. So let's have a think about the values that we got when we did our experiment. So we got three values, didn't we? We said that uh, the current, which we represent with a capital I, was equal to 0.2 amperes. We noted that the voltage, represented by V, is equal to 2 volts. And we said that the resistance, represented by an R, was equal to 10 ohms. So there we've got our three values. Now when George Simon Ohm started doing his research into electricity, he discovered that there's a relationship between these three things within an electrical circuit. And what he basically said was that the current in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage and that the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So let's just think about what that means in slightly simpler terms. Basically, what Ohm's law states is that if you increase the voltage in a circuit, you will increase the current that flows. It also states that if you increase the resistance that flows in a circuit, you will decrease the current that flows, which makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Here, we're increasing the electrical push, therefore more current will flow. If we increase the resistance, or how much the circuit is trying to stop the current from flowing, then less current will flow, which makes perfect sense. But what we can then do is that we can take that relationship and we can put it into a formula, a mathematical formula. And that looks like this. We've got I is equal to V divided by R, or I equals V over R. Now, you might have heard this before expressed in different ways. You might have heard it expressed as V equals IR or something like that. That's not incorrect, but this is the best way to remember Ohm's law. I equals V over R, because this represents what's happening in the real world. Generally speaking, we're taking some kind of resistance, and that could represent one of many loads uh, in a typical electrical installation. Uh, anything that produces heat is generally a resistive load. And we apply a voltage to that resistive load. And again, in installation terms, that's normally 230 volts. By applying that voltage to that resistance, we cause a current to flow. So you can see here that the current that results from applying a voltage to a resistor can be found by performing this calculation, I equals V over R. So try and remember this formula in this way. This is a really important formula, I equals V over R. So let's put the numbers in that we measured uh, within our circuit and see if the calculation works. So we've got I equals V over R, and then we're gonna continue this on. I is equal to the two volts that we applied to our circuit divided by the 10 ohms of the resistor. And if we do that calculation, two divided by 10, we end up finding that I is equal to 0.2 amperes, like that. So I equals V over R, therefore I equals two divided by 10, therefore I equals 0.2 amperes. And we can start to see, can't we, that Actually, this formula starts to make a lot of sense with what we looked at in the previous video, that if we increase voltage, we increase current. That's why the voltage has to be on the top of this formula. If we make this number bigger, we're making the number that we are dividing larger. And if you have a bigger number up here, you're going to get a bigger number over here. Likewise, we said that if you increase resistance, you decrease current. That's why the resistance value has to go on the bottom of this formula. 
because as we make this number at the bottom bigger, as we make this dividing number bigger, we end up with uh, less on this side as the answer, so we end up with a smaller result. So we can see from this that all of this makes perfect sense in connection with the things that we've discussed. So as we increase voltage, we increase current. As we increase resistance, we decrease current. And that is what gives us this beautiful formula, I equals V over R, and how we can calculate current within a circuit. So we've used our experiment here to generate that really, really important formula. It's one of the most important things that you'll need to remember for your electrical principles uh, unit that you're doing on your course. You must remember Ohm's law, I is equal to V divided by R. I equals V over R. If you're struggling to remember this, keep watching this video. Uh, write this formula down on a post-it note, stick it somewhere where you're gonna see it regularly so that you can get this formula absolutely logged into your head because it's absolutely critical for electricians that we remember that formula. We're gonna be using it all the time on site when we're calculating fault current, uh, when we're doing various things like that. So it really, really does matter. So let's bear that formula in mind, I equals V over R, and we hope this video, as always, has been some help.